Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Skyrim. Last time when we left off I was at Tel Mithrin, basically just chilling. Um, I am going to quickly advance old friends by putting on Neloth's Ring of Tracking and looking around the grounds of Tel Mithrin. There's a graveyard over here to the east of the tower, which, uh, I haven't really bothered exploring until now, but when you look over here, you can see a little glow. It's even guarded by an ash spawn. Oh, come on now. There we go. He is apparently of the immolator persuasion. Something very strange is happening with this Netch Calf. Something I don't fully understand, but that's okay. Let's search this graveyard while we're here. This is Ildari's sarcophagus. It's got a staff of calm and a heart stone in it. Completed. Find the source of the attacks. Talk to Neloth. Neloth is being attacked by an unknown assailant. He gave me a ring that identified the source of the attacks as a heartstone hidden in the grave of Ildari Sarothril. And that's that. <clears throat> we'll be doing more with that later. For now, let's put our uh, standard ring back on. As you can see, there's not really much else going on in this graveyard. Though we can search one skeleton inside that sarcophagus. That's something. Just because my OCD self can't quite help it, I want to check one more time with the apothecary. As if she does ask me for vampire dust, I just stashed it right in there. It shouldn't be a problem to get it to her. We're one of the... As a matter of fact, I need a... That she's still on a hag raven claw. We'll just quick load and head outside. Now, before we leave Tel Mithrin, recall that the Deathbrand treasure map showed something right here beside it. So we'll want to go track that down, of course. You can see the little water feature the map is pointing to. You can see that we've got some ash spawn that have appeared down here. I don't think they were here at the start. Let's just make sure they're dealt with. And now, somewhere in the neighborhood of this area, we should be able to find another one of the Deathbrand treasures. Where exactly, though? That's a good question. Ah, right here. There's even a dead treasure hunter. Two of them. The ancient chest has an expert lock on it. That's fine and dandy. We'll pick that open. And we'll get the Death Brand Boots. Increases your carrying capacity by 10 for each Death Brand item you wear. So those come off the unique item list. Very cool. Now, we're going to take 
a quick trip back to Raven Rock. All right. First up, they serve the best sujamo I've ever tasted over the wretched neck. They're worth every penny. Last time I rode Jalan's ship, I was heaving my guts for It's away. busier now that things are starting to look up. I guess I might stay a bit longer after all. Um, still buying East Empire pendants? You're making my buyer Keep them coming. Very cool. If you need any supplies, you know where to find me. Mm. Okay. I was just looking over the uh, <clears throat> available powers from the All Maker Stones. They're all single use, and then you have to reacquire them at the stone, so it's not like we're making a permanent choice at any time. And now we'll run over and cleanse the earth stone. Our eyes once were blinded. Go! My main goal is to keep those two alive, because the citizens of Ravenrock who were permanently stuck here actually do feature in some quests. Completed. Cleanse the Earthstone. Now I think what's happened... Oh shit, there's a second lurker. Well, that's not good. There we go. The entire island isn't covered in ash, you know. They have what happened? Yeah, they're still dazed, so we'll have to talk to them later. But note that now the Earth Stone has been cleared, so we can take it off the clearable locations list. Always good. Now, from here, let's check our Death Brand map again. Before we go anywhere else, right up here, at the tip of this peninsula, should be another bit of death brand treasure unlike the one by tell mithrin it's got some live ones guarding it Okay, come on now. Alright, <clears throat> now let's search those two. That's copy of the book, Death Brand, if you're wondering. Obviously don't need that. 
But we do, of course, want to pickpocket or pick the lock on this ancient chest, which will get us the death brand armor. Increases your stamina by 15 for each death brand item you wear. This becomes pretty compelling with its synergies. Crafted armor is probably still better, but this is cool stuff. Wouldn't shake a stick at it, that's for sure. So death brand armor now comes off the quest list, or the unique item list, rather. I should have three death brand items now. I do. That's excellent. All right, now let's bounce north to cleanse the water stone. So here we are. Let's just do the same thing. Go! There's the lurker that always appears. Completed, cleanse the water stone, and now I suppose we get to deal with a dragon. Let's dragon rend it. Make this quick. I don't know why none of those were hits. There we go. It would not surprise me in the least if Mirak also stole this soul. I think it's, uh, from the time you first meet him to the time you finish the quest line, it's 50-50 odds every dragon you kill, whether you get the soul or he shows up to steal it. Looks like I get this one. And we have also cleared the water stone. So let's take it off the clearable locations list. And, because they'll disappear from the game, let's go ahead and talk to the four people who were working there. Oh. I never would have believed it if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes. Well, this is a pain. They're going to have to comment on the dragon. In all my years, I've never seen such a thing. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Well, I've got something else to do. So we can... It's a long way back to Windhelm from here. I think we've got to get back to our ship now. We're already late. Not sure why we decided to take such an extended shore time. By the gods. It's really dead no then? They're gonna fiddle faddle around. The fourth item of death brand treasure is just north of that river. Let's go get it. And that should give them time to overcome their amazement. 
I think Netch actually still stay docile unless you actually attack them. Which I see no real reason to do. <laughs> ah yes, here we go. Mud crabs and reeklings. gonna say it sounds like I still have a live mud crab somewhere and I did not that it matters much well let's search all these poor little fools and then let's spring the last ancient chest and in it we get a gilden hole barrow key completed use the death brand treasure map to find the treasure explore gilden hole barrow Death Brand Gauntlets. While dual wielding, your one-handed attacks do 10% more damage for each Death Brand item you wear. So the Death Brand Gauntlets are off the unique item list. And our quest is updated. By following an ancient treasure map, I found the armor of Hackneer Deathbrand, the legendary pirate king. In addition to his armor, one chest also contained the key to Gildenhull Barrow. Could it be connected to Hackneer's treasure? Now, oh, do you even need to ask? Of course. Yeah, so these four people will disappear from the game if you exit the cell and return. Let's go chat with them before they leave. See if they feel like thanking me for saving their asses from being Mirax slaves. Probably not, but you never know. Alright, what's up? It's a long way back to Windhelm from here. Think we've got to get back to our ship now. Best be shoving off now. When the tide goes, we'll go with it. We're already late sure why we decided to take such an extended shore time. Hope our shipments are still good. How long has it been? Best be shoving off now. 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 Alright, that's all they have to say. So let's head back to the Skull Village now. I'm going to try to get the bandit leader quest from Fadari again. There's also a new one we should be able to pick up from Morwen. <laughs> I'm the leader of the Skull, but it's the all me. Not yet. As leader of the Skull, huh? I've met a few Nords from Skyrim. They thought us strange, but in our hearts, I don't think we are so different. Okay, let's talk to Morwen then. Great comfort to know that my mother was Skull. But she left the village, and I was born in Skyrim. Why did your mother leave the village? A trade ship from Skyrim struck ice off the coast near the village, and the Skull took in the surviving sailors. My mother fell in love with one of the sailors, my father, and eventually returned with him to Skyrim. Did she ever return here? Sadly, no. She died in Falkley, where I was born. What do you need? I came across a few of my mother's old things not long ago. Among them was a necklace that my father gave to her when they were married. I believe she would want it placed upon her tombstone in Falkley as a symbol of her undying love and the great sacrifice she made for it. If you find yourself in Falkley, please give this amulet to the priest Uma and tell him that I sent you. He will understand. I don't have much to give in reward, 
But return to me when the task is done, and I'll do what I can. Thank you, Svalbard. Take Bera's necklace to Runeil in Falkreath. Bera's necklace added. This quest is, for whatever reason, called Skull Village Dialogue in the creation kit. But, it is, in fact, a decent reason to head back to the mainland. First, we'll head to here. Then we'll head to Falkreath. Then we'll make a quick pit stop at Winstad. spreading like mage fire. The great evil has been vanquished. You have truly saved us all. Looks like Reniel is in Dead Man's Drink. Simple enough. Good to see Skyrim still has such fine people. You give an old man hope. Morwood of Skull Village sent me to ask a favor of you. Morwood, you say? Now, that is a name I haven't heard in a long time. Left to join her mother's people on Salt Town, as I recall. I knew her parents quite well, you know. Vera and Ulfra were good people, very much in love. Now, what can I do for young Morwood? She wants this placed at her mother's grave. Ah, yes. Vera's silver necklace. It was a wedding gift. She rarely took it off. I'll be glad to oblige. What a touching gesture. To display the symbol of her devotion in such a way. Tell Morwen I'll be happy to grant her request. I'm sure it will bring joy to her mother and father as they walk in Asterius. Bera's necklace removed. Completed. Take Bera's necklace to Runil and Falkreath. Return to Morwen in Skull Village. We will, but let's make a pit stop at Winstad first. Check in on the family, drop some shit off, all that good stuff. I've accrued quite a bit of stuff to drop off since the last time I was here. Shabby. Is there anything you need, dear? Dollars. The gold is flowing nicely. Here's your half of the profit. You know I need dollars. Well, that's lovely. Let's check the girls' dresser. There should definitely be stuff in here by now. No books, though. Papa, did you get me a present? Not this time. Aww. And... Papa. Let's go to our stash. We can put in... The Dwarven Black Bow of Fate. The glass bow of the Stag Prince. Horksbane. Stormfang. Ozidal's Boots of Water Walking. The 
the death brand armor, all four pieces. I think for the moment, Neloth's Ring of Tracking is still a quest item. When close enough, identifies the source of the Ashspawn attacks on Tel Mithrid. The Visage of Mazund. Keep those. None of these can be removed, that's fine. We can get rid of the Deathbrand treasure map now, we don't need it anymore. Oh, just kidding. Kagrumez Resonance Gems, I think we can get rid of. And I'll hold on to them, just for giggles. Need to keep Karstag's Skull. Need to keep the Leather Strips. Can sell that Heartstone. I want to keep that unique skull. Because it's so fun looking. Is there anything you need? I'm just going to sell Shavi that heartstone. Oh, she won't buy it. Go figure. I'll be here if you need me, love. Oh, and that heartstone is a quest item anyway. Yeah. Okay. Cool. We're out then. Back to Solstheim. Lightened our load substantially. And when we get to Gildenhall Barrow, you got to be ready for a hell of a fight. Just be aware of that. Come on now. There we go. Off to Solstheim. And we'll head to the Skull Village. To chat with Morwen. <laughs> I like that. Hawala fa kara, bala ki kalu, puja kan paru ki ja, gula, gula, gula. Reekling Godspeak song. All right. First thing is to v visit Morwen, finish her quest. My mother was Skull, but she left the village, and I was born in Skyrim. Runeil agreed to your request. You brought warmth to my heart, outsider, and I'm in your debt. Please, accept this as a token of gratitude. Once again, you've proven yourself an ally to the Skull. Nordic carved helmet added. Don't care. But that does complete the quest, uh, Skull Village Dialogue, for what it's worth. Take that off the list, try one more time to get Fenari to give me her Radiant Quest. I came here to when she doesn't. I'm the leader of the Skull, but it's the Allmaker who truly protects and provides. 
get rid of that helmet, because I have no use for it whatsoever. All right, well, we'll have occasion to come back here and try and get that quest. No worries. So let's head to Gildenhall Barrow now to finish up Deathbrand. We've got the key now, so we can head inside. Guess we could have gotten in anyway, but... What do we have here? Dead adventurer with a copy of Deathbrand and a torn note. Well, let's read the torn note. Take it off my book list, too. The single richest treasure trove in all of Solstein, they said. Bah! Looks like this place was cleaned out centuries ago. The stall rib might be worth something, but my pickaxe ain't even good enough to chip it. Still, I can't shake the feeling that there's something I'm missing. There's an odd draft in this room. Secret passage, maybe? I've locked myself in until those bandits are good and gone. I suppose I'll keep looking. Not much else I can do. <laughs> right, well... So we got a couple of stall rim deposits. <laughs> so we actually do need to mine our way through. Here, I'll give this guy that amethyst and three of the stall rims since I don't need them. With that done, I'm going to re-equip my bow. I'm going to get Aura Whisper back on. It's definitely my favorite default shout. There's the door that requires the key. Oh, look here. Why, yes. We've got piles of gold. Expert locked chests that the key opens. Surprisingly weak armor and weapons. That's all good. I think I just took a linen wrap by mistake. Another one. Ah, uh, come on team. You know I don't want a linen wrap. Nor do I want a plate. Good gravy. Too much worthless shit mixed in here. I almost trick you into grabbing it. I just love that pile of gold. Go back to the other end. You will note, however, that the gate slammed shut behind us. Probably already know that's not a good sign. Master locked chest. And another door that requires a key. Alright, here we are. Oh gosh, I wonder what's going to happen here. One hell of a fight, that's what. Be ready. I'm gonna search that. And the boss chest first. <coughs> <coughs> Pre
pretty sure I already know telekinesis. Yes. All right. There's Hackney or Deathbrand's skeleton. And here is one of his swords, Blood Scythe. Completed, explore Gildenhall Barrow. When wielded with Soul Render, absorbs 15 health and has a chance to weaken enemy armor. So I'll take Blood Scythe off my unique item list. <laughs> By following an ancient treasure map, I found the armor of Hackneer Deathbrand, the legendary pirate king. A key contained in one of the chests led me to Gildenhall Barrow, where I found his tomb and one of his cursed swords. But when I touched the sword, his ghost appeared and attacked. Indeed, get ready for the ruckus. Defeat Hackneer Deathbrand. There he is. I forget where his default position actually is, but mortal fool. No one hides from the dead. Yes, Hackneer's whole crew appears. And yes, they like to party. Oh gosh, come on, team. Only a fool tries to kill the dead. What the hell was that? Not even sure. It's all good, though. Garrick Garrick Windrime. You'll remember Garrick's name from the Death Brand book. And Fallon Ebenhand. They were the two potential successors in the book, remember? That's a neat little bit of continuity, if nothing else. There, we've completed Defeat Hackneer Deathbrand, so we've cleared Gildenhall Barrow, and we've completed the Deathbrand quest. Let me take all those bits off my list. And let's make sure we look at this. By following an ancient treasure map, I found the armor of Hackneer Deathbrand, the legendary Pirate King. A key contained in one of the chests led me to Gildenhall Barrow, where I defeated Hackneer's ghost, and claimed his swords and gold as well. Mm -hmm. So we can search all these ghostly remains. 
Might find something decent. We need to make sure to search Hackneers. picked up a bow and some ectoplasm I did not want. There's Hackneer. We can get the other weapon, Soul Render. When wielded with Blood Scythe, absorbs 15 Magicka and has a chance to dispel magical defenses. So Soul Render is now off our unique items list. And we found all the unique weapons in Dragonborn. Not all the artifacts. There are still artifact weapons to find. All right. Let's roll out of here. That business all sorted out, the gates open again, and we can leave. <laughs> Fast travel back to the Skull Village, where I will try yet again to get Fenari's quest. I'm just, I'm not sure why it isn't triggering. It could be any number of things. Could be passage of time. Could be some quest I need to finish first is active. I'm the leader of the skull, but it's the I'm just gonna keep checking. Anyway, we're still not getting that, so let's head south. To Bujold's retreat. Which is gonna be this little spot right here, where we're gonna meet some more Nords. There is technically still one settlement on Solstein that we haven't explored yet. We are about to get there. This is Bujold's Retreat. We'll take it off the discoverable location list. Now, we don't actually want to talk to Bujold yet. The master calls. Oh. What are we doing here? We should either get used to staying here, or be preparing to retake the hall. You're having us do neither, and I can't stomach it. But your stomach isn't my problem. We'll act when I say we do, and not before. Well, you'd better say something, and soon. Okay. So... Well, I guess we can check out the settlement while everybody's gone. Gone to work for Mirak, as people will do. There's really nothing here, except maybe up in the main tent. Cool, all right, well, let's wait for daylight. Only five hours, that's not too bad. We don't want to speak to Bujold, because that'll start a quest that'll actually lock us out of one that we're able to do here f first. That may not have made a huge amount of sense, but it should in just a minute. 
All right, so we can now pickpocket and chat with Hilland. Just leave us, please. If you're here about the Reeklings, just tread quietly around my sister. Bujo feels so guilty about what happened. Try not to provoke her. Help! Just leave us, please. People seem pretty tense around here. You don't know the half of it. Bujo's just embarrassed, I think. Doesn't help that her husband is one of the loudest complainers. She's always been quick to shame. Who's her husband? Kuvar. He thinks we've all gotten a little too soft. I can see what he means looking at Elmas, but the rest of us still have our edge. At least, I think so. And don't tell Elmas I said that. Are you one of the warriors from Thirsk? That depends on who you ask. I fight, I protect the hall, I bring in meat. And I think I could take on most of the tree lovers up in the Skull Village. But because I'd rather drink a mug of meat at night instead of training until I drop, Kuvar calls me a layabout. Wish he would just lighten up. Cool. Good day. And there's Hilland. Here's Halbar and Iron Fur. I don't even want to think about what those creatures are doing with my fires. I've tried hitting against a stump by my pants, but iron needs iron if you want it shaped right. Sorry, friend. I can't make anything for you down here. I'll need to get back to my forge. Need to get back to my anvil. Need to get back to my anvil. Sure. Okay. Just leave us, please. There's Bujold. We're not going to talk to her yet. Need to get back to my anvil. Where are the others? Oh, you know what? I bet they're still at the Beast Stone. If you're here about the Reeklings, just tread quietly around my sister. Yeah, nobody else is around. Oh, well, here's Kuvar. If you're a talker, go talk to my wife. Don't judge this place. We could make home wherever we are. If you're a talker, go talk to my wife. What is Thirsk? Do you know of the Skull? Of course, the village to the north. A long time ago, a man named Rothmund left the Skull to form his own tradition. Warriors in the wild, living like the Nords of old. They would hunt, they would fight, and the mightiest among them would rise up as leader. But those days are behind us now. What brings you out here? We brought ourselves out here, along with our shame. What do you mean? We used to be proud warriors of Thirst Mead Hall. There, up on the hill. But we let that sweet life get the better of us. We grew soft and... What happened? Reeklings. Those filthy vermin. They came in numbers. Waves of the things. One at a time. They're pests. But with this many. And so here we are. Out of our home. Until next time. All right, fair enough. He just came on so quickly. Yeah, it looks like if you're a talker. Go talk to my wife. Well, here come the others. Some of them, anyway. This is probably Elmas, I think. He's the one I'm trying to talk to. Oh, good. Yes, there he is. Got any meat? Have you been by Thirsk? Have you seen... Is there any of the mead left? Got any meat? Farewell. All right, then. Are you the one who makes the mead? I make it. I drink it. I share it with friends. Ha! Thirsk didn't always make its own mead. No. We used to get by on shipments from Skyrim. 
But those gold grubbers at the East Empire Company started charging more than their share for bringing it over. We still buy what we have to, but I make as much as I can. Are you a warrior? I wouldn't be at thirst if I wasn't. These days I focus a little more on the creature comforts of the hall, though. Food, drink, stories. It drives Kuvar mad, but someone has to do it or the place would be a little cold. Herkia and Serkjorg are also members of this group, but they're working at the Temple of Mirak, so we won't see them. Is there anything that would make being down here more bearable? Well, the easy answer, of course. Mead! Actually, now that I think of it, I have been missing the Ashfire. It's a special brew that we make at Thirsk. If you could somehow get up there and grab a bottle, I'd be a long way towards forgetting how miserable it is down here. Bye. Bring Elmas some Ashfire Mead from Thirsk Mead Hall. Farewell. Sure thing, Hoss. It's easy enough. Now... Keeping it simple. We're going to head straight up the hill. And we're going to discover Thirsk Mead Hall. Right here. Pretty straightforward. The Reeklings start out non-hostile. So don't attack them. There's Thirsk Mead Hall. Take it off the discoverable locations list. You me. Who taught you to talk? You me. Oh, sure. around the reeklings have taken over that much is obvious just trying to remember where the ash fire mead is because we want to grab it now before we have to make a choice about whether to side with the humans or the reeklings. Where did you live before you were here? Who are you? How did you learn to talk? Are you saying you want my help? Bilgamuk is an animal of some kind, and you want it back? Started. Started, the Chief of Thirst Call. I found a group of Reeklings who seem to have taken up residence in Thirsk Mead Hall. Somehow their chief has learned how to speak intelligently, and has asked me to assist them with a number of small favors. Give Bilgamuk some meat. This culminates in having to wipe out Bujold's camp, so you have to choose between siding with the Reeklings or the humans. I'm going to side with the humans because it leads to more fun questing later on and better services here at Thirsk. But the novelty of siding with the Reeklings can be pretty fun if you want to do that.
I just don't. Where the hell is the Ashfire Mead? Ah, there it is. And let's head out. Okay, let's put Bend Will on. Jog just a bit further west to the final Allmaker Stone. <laughs> Up here, not far from the Temple of Mirak itself, is the Beast Stone we'll discover right quick. <laughs> There's a Reekling working on it too. That's always fun. So we have discovered the Beast Stone. Looks like we have a cultist to kill before we can clear it. No problem. Where are you, bro? Oh gosh. See, we do know Muffle, but it's cool that he tried to drop a spell tome. Well, let's go ahead and cleanse this one. Save a few Reeklings. Kill a Lurker. We've cleared the Beast Stone. We've completed Cleanse the Beast Stone. And in fact, we've completed Cleansing the Stones. So Beast Stone comes off the clearable locations list. And Cleansing the Stones comes off my quest list. Awesome. I cleansed the sacred stones that Mirak has, had corrupted. Solstheim is free of his influence except for the tree stone, which remains imprisoned inside his new temple. Very good. Oops, I hit caps lock. Now we want to head southeast from here just a bit. There's an unmarked camp. Somewhere around here. I thought it was right around here, but... Not even that much space to cover. Why can't I find this camp? Ah, here we go. Good. So we got some dead folks. Pretty obviously killed by Reeklings. Naturally, the Reeklings appear. Deal with them. Is there really only one other one? Sure is acting that way. That's surprising, but in a pleasant way. Oh, 
Come on now. There we go. Now we can finish searching that camp. Not much here, but there is an East Empire strong box with a pendant inside. All right, now we can head back to Bujold's retreat. We can give Elmas his mead. A new batch of the Ashfire should be ready for bottling soon, unless the Reeklings used it for bath water. Which will complete the quest, Elmas Favor quest, mead. Yes, he has two quests. I found some Ashfire mead. Give mead. Oh, that's the stuff, all right. You're a good friend to Thirsk and to me. I thank you. Completed. Bring Elmas some Ashfire Mead from Thirsk Mead Hall. Now let's talk to Bujold. Thanks for taking that thing down. We're supposed to be warriors, not crafters. Good to finally be getting some sleep at night. Things are bad enough without everyone around here looking death-eyed too. Come to mock our shame like the others? Unless you can help, leave us in peace. I don't really have time for this. <clears throat> Mm hmm. Good day. What's going on here? What's going on here is that we've been kicked out of our home. The Mead Hall, up there on the hill. We were... Some Reeklings have taken it over. How were Reeklings able to overpower you? With tenacity and numbers. It didn't help that we'd grown a little too comfortable up there. Too much Mead. Too many stories. Too few battles. What if you had one extra warrior? Are you offering to help? Some new blood should be enough to rouse these layabouts to actually fight again. That sounds like fun. Well, let's move then. Failed the Chief of Thirst Call. I found a group of Reeklings who took over Thirsk Mead Hall but chose not to help them. over here. I know you're all starting to settle in here and keep up the fat lives you've got used to up in the hall. But look here. This outsider has more fire than any of you. All I had to do was mention our little infestation and he volunteered in a second. I don't want to have my spirit outstripped by some wanderer. So let's get up there and kill us some reeklings. Started. Retaking Thirsk. Approach Thirsk Mead Hall. I've agreed to help the Nords from Thirsk Mead Hall take their home back from the Reeklings who have infested it. And sure enough, it's time for a pretty straightforward Reekling massacre. Nothing we haven't done before, of course. It's still fun to do. Get ready. Kill the Reeklings. Nineteen of them, apparently. Seven of nineteen. Eight of nineteen. That means there should theoretically be eight to search. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Don't care. 
Certainly don't care enough to hunt. Let's just head inside and finish the job. Awesome. Completed. Kill the Reeklings. Speak to Bujold. I helped the warriors of Thirsk Meat all retake their home from the infestation of Reeklings. Hmm. Ah, uh, that was almost exhilarating. How are you feeling? That was easy. Good to hear. In fact, that's just the spirit I'll need from my second. Do you want to come with me? Your what? My second. If we're going to take up residence here again, I need to get the blessing of Rokmund again. I'll need a witness and, well, you see the kind of horker brains I deal with around here. What do you say? I'd be honored. Well, let's not waste time talking about it then. Completed. Speak to Bujold. Meet Bujold at Hrothman's Barrow. I help the warriors of Thirsk Meat Hall retake their home from the infestation of Reeklings. Their leader, Bujold, has asked me to accompany her to Hrothman's Barrow, where she hopes to receive the blessing of Thirsk's founder to continue her leadership. Let's just keep moving. Yeah, of course. I'll meet you there, don't worry. A lot of work to do around this place. A lot of work to do around this place. And so with that done, we'll leave for now. When we get back, they'll have fixed it all up, of course. We're going to do some other stuff, though. Now let's head to Benkon Girike. I want to head south from here to these snow-clad ruins, which are that landmark over there. I'm honestly not quite sure the best way to get there. So I'm just going to brute force it. This is where those three werebears would have originated. So it may be this place is already empty unless they've respawned. Here are the snow-clad ruins. Looks like the werebears have in fact respawned. Let's kill them before they change. Oh, for fuck's sake. God damn it! Sheesh, thank you. Alright, so now we have discovered and cleared the snow-clad ruins. Take them off both lists. Let's 
Let's search the three werebears. I like that they all carry honeycombs. I think that's hysterical. That one even carries honey. You roll in here, you won't see much. The treasure is on top on that platform. And if I remember, it isn't that hard to get to. There we go. All right, cool. Now from here, we can head to Hoffman's Barrow, which is that cave just to the west. Where Bujold is waiting for us. I guess this is how we're supposed to get to snow-clad ruins. Okay. No worries. We can more or less just arc right through here. This is back where we fought the serpentine dragon, remember? after Saring's watch. Here is Frothman's Barrow, discovered. It's actually not a clearable location. Let's chat with Bejold. What is this place? The burial place of Rothmund, who founded Thursk. He brought a group of true warriors away from the soft life of the Skald to know the wilderness, to feel the sting of cold and of steel. I know that sounds a little silly. It's just the way it's written in the books, and that phrase has always stuck with me. What's going to happen in there? It's pretty simple. The Rothmund's axe is in there with him. Anyone who attempts to take hold of it has their spirit judged by Rothmund himself. We're going to fight his ghost? No, no, nothing like that. He doesn't need to battle us to know us. He's always watched over Thursk and sees us from beyond. And in my case, since he's already deemed me worthy, it will just be a matter of him remembering why he blessed me before. But really, all you need to do is watch. I'm ready. Let's not waste any time then. Completed Meet Bujold at Frothman's Barrow. Commune with Frothman's spirit. Flavor text didn't change, so let's head inside. <laughs> I think... That does not happen if you come here without having retaken Thursk. Well, we can head up here. We can search these chests. So I just need to take hold of it. You seek my blessing for the leadership of Thursk Hall? I do. It is I, Bujol. You blessed me in the past, and now I've rid the Hall of Reeklings and returned it to its rightful owners. And well it is that this has happened. But I have always watched, and know that it was your softness that led to your own exile. You no, allowed your I... fellow warriors to grow weak while the dangers around you mounted. 
the leadership is not mine? No, nor is there any among you fit to serve. For a band in the wilderness, it is better to have no leader than a poor one. That was a little embarrassing. How are you feeling about that? Ashamed, but I guess that was the point. I need to return to Thursk. No matter what Rotman says, we need a leader, and I'm still the best person for that. You'll go against Rothman's wishes? And look what's happened to us so far under his watchful eye. He gave his blessing to all the leaders who brought us to this point. Anyway, he's dead and we're alive. It's time to begin a new tradition for Thursk, and I'm going to do that. All I need is for you to back me up. You don't even need to lie. Just don't tell anyone else what you heard here. I can't let you lead Thursk. I'm afraid you might say that. Well, looks as though I'll have to prove my metal against you now. Never. Completed. Commune with Rothman's spirit. Defeat Bujol. I helped the warriors of Thursk Mead Hall retake their home from the infestation of Reeklings. Their leader, Bujol, asked me to accompany her to Rothman's Barrow, where she was denied the blessings of Thursk's founder. She expressed a desire to lead the hall anyway, and when I opposed her fraud, she attacked me. Didn't you see me handle the Reeklings? Are you an idiot? Yes, I suppose you are. Completed. Retaking Thursk. Bujol the Intrepid. So she adopts her liar name even when I kill her. So we can take Retaking Thursk off of the quest list. There are a few other quests to do for the people who are now there. Uh, we'll worry about that later. Let's look at this. I helped the warriors of Thursk Mead Hall retake their home from the infestation of Reeklings. Their leader, Bujold, asked me to accompany her to Rothman's Barrow, where she was denied the blessings of Thursk's founder. She expressed a desire to leave the hall anyway, and when I opposed her fraud, she became enraged. I was forced to kill her to defend myself. Alrighty. Well, we're done here. Let's head outside. <laughs> now from here, we want to go, yes, we are making our way towards that dungeon, but we want to cut up the hill here. just a little ways up. There's a Reekling ambush. As there so often is. Pretty much any time you see a dead Reaver in a bunch of barrels, you can know what's coming. You know, I wanted to take the spears. I already searched the chest. Yes, I did. Now, the main thing to look for is... Oh. I thought there was an East Empire strong box here. There it is. I knew there was. Let's open this one. Make sure we get the pendant. And now, we can head up this hill to that pass we can see, which is the Mose Ring Pass. Where, surprise, surprise, we're going to get ambushed by some more Reeklings. So here is the Mose Ring Pass. can take it off my discoverable list, at least. Mm. 
Oh, come on with the bullseye perk. There we go. Right in the face, that's what I'm talking about. So, Mosering Pass is not cleared yet. Let's search. Let's look around, let's look around, let's search. First things first, we'll wipe out the Reeklings. And of course, we'll search the ones we already killed. Oh, there's a fun little bit here at the Mosering Pass that connects back to the Blood Moon expansion. I'll explain it to you once I'm ready to deal with it. First, let me grab what I'm very happy to announce is the final East Empire Company pendant. Did I get it? Yes, okay, good. Now, head into the Strange Vessel, which actually connects to a quest from Blood Moon about an airship. So it's just giving us like a secret notification, which I suppose is fine. I don't know why Mosering Pass didn't clear though. I'm bothered by that. But the boss chest is in here. So we'll want to get that, of course. I thought maybe there were more enemies in here, but apparently not. Yeah, Mosering Pass still isn't cleared. Go! the wrong shout. I don't want to leave the pass until I solve this cleared problem. Ah, there it is. Just took it a minute. <clears throat> of course, I did happen to spot another Reekling. Anyway, Mosering Pass is cleared can take it off the clearable locations list. Well, no, I don't think that is a reclaim, actually. Now the next, the third of the four insane mountain peaks is right over here. Well, that's going to be a reclaim. we got to climb to the top of that. That's Mount Mosring. Let me drop a quick save, and then we'll start working on getting up there. I don't think this one is as hard as, uh... Whatever the second one was, the one above Saring's Watch. Vitcold Peak, the one near Falbthar's, was actually quite easy. I didn't even need the horse for it. I think I may need... Well, I may not need the horse for this one. This is going pretty well. And you never know when you're suddenly going to hit that brick wall, either. You just not be able to ascend anymore. I don't like using the horse because it's so hard to navigate in third person, but he is able to get up areas that the player character just can't. Well, that was productive. That was not.
I do like that they put in these little Easter eggs for the truly insane mountain climbers who would just exert the effort to get to the top of these, even with no obvious visible reward up there. All right, let's get back to this little flat piece and summon Arvac. Didn't happen naturally. Where did he pop up? I can't even tell. It's like he shows up for just a split second and then he falls. Who knows where he falls to, but he falls. Alright, alright, we're just gonna have to go down. Get on our boy! Yeah, buddy. losing ground. No, 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 no. Let's go back this way. Come on. Get on up there. I know you can do it. I know you can do it. I seem to be going down rather than up. Oh god, come on! Why did he fall so fucking far? After being so close to the top, when all I did was keep running forward. Come on. Okay, 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 okay. There. Oh, shit, shit, shit. Come on. No, just a little farther. Oh, just a little farther. We're, we're stable here. That's worth another quick save. Oh, it was about to let us have it. Then something went wrong. Come on, up there. Come on. No. No. Mount Mose Ring discovered. Oh, thank Christ. What a pain in the ass. Okay. Woo! Woo, lads! As they say. Alright. Mount Mose Ring discovered. Only have to do that one more time, thank God. Now well, let's head northwest. Oh, shit.
Did I just die? Yep, I sure did. How funny. Alright, let's fast travel back to Mosering Pass. We'll get off our vac here. We'll head northwest to the White Ridge Barrow. Our next dungeon. So here is White Ridge Barrow. We've discovered it. It is clear a bowl. So get ready for an actual dungeon as we head inside. You may note the uh, little cabin over here with all the spiders outside remember I mentioned eventually the game would show us what to do with albino spider pods this is the dungeon where that happens so there was a jumping frost spider and an albino spider and there I think was another jumping frost spider and there's yet another one. Now you can see mature spider eggs and what happens. It's not that pleasant, I'll tell you. White Ridge Sanctum requires key. Interesting. Alright, let's head on into White Ridge Barrow. Got about half an hour left. This may be the last thing we're able to do, but should be fine. But, uh, this place is an interesting dungeon, for sure. Pretty self-contained with its storyline, but interesting. Note that the Reavers had barred the door from this side. Isn't that interesting? Let's head inside. Ah, spiders. More reavers, albino spiders. There's an albino spider. Oops, I don't have any souls with which to recharge. I think I have, I think I do still have Aura Whisper on. These spiders are definitely creepier than frostbite spiders. Even though they're smaller. Maybe almost because they're smaller. And they make that freaky as fuck clicking sound. Anyway, yes. Spider webs, oh joy. Let's head on down. Not gonna lie, I'm a recovering arachnophobe in real life. By which I mean, I am afraid of spiders in real life, but I'm less afraid than my wife, which pretty much means I've just had to learn to deal with them. I mean, the albinos are the only ones that leave behind searchable corpses, as you may have figured out already. Everything else explodes in one way or another as soon as you hit it. Pretty easy to figure out what's going on with these eggs, too, when you see them live. A 
jumping flame spider. A flame cloaked spider. And there was another albino. Okay. Well, let's just move right along. Here's your staircase down. Now, what the fuck is that? Look. It's a dude with glowing green skin, and it looks like there's a spider humping his neck. Well, that can't be good. It's a bandit. That's a plain and simple bandit. By all appearances. There's a bandit marauder. He's got the same thing. I'm a jumping flame spider with him. Look, there's even a dead Draugr. Okay. That's pretty obviously the way forward. So let's head back here to this side path before we move on. Yes, there is another of those damn spiders to deal with. Just punch the webs and open the iron door. Some albinos in here, along with some glowing mushrooms. Alright, I think we can all handle that. Dead Draugr too. No problem. Treasure chest. We can definitely handle that. Oh shit. One Draugr still alive. And we know how to deal with that, don't we lads? And another chest here too. Oh fun. Alright, that'll do her. What about this up here? I don't remember there actually being anything in there. Yeah, but I could be wrong. I am wrong. Look at that. Hot damn. Neat. Now, by process of elimination, we're finally down to a single path. I'm going to drop a quick save here before advancing. We got this nonsense in full effect. Here's the White Ridge Sanctum.
there's another door bar on this side. That guy, Marilar Rendus, actually seems to be holding spiders in his hands like grenades. Come on. So far, so good. We got a lower level. We got a straight on. Let's search Marilar. Six flame cloaked spiders. Tosses a flame cloaked spider on the ground that will cause fire damage to enemies that get too close. Jumping flame spider. Tosses a jumping fire spider on the ground that will cause fire damage to enemies that get too close. Oh, tosses a jumping fire spider on the ground that will launch itself at nearby enemies and explode if it lands near them. Marilar's cage door key. And Marilar's journal. Well, we're certainly going to want to read that. Take it off the book list. So here is Marilar's journal. I know what he's planning. Does he really think he can take all the credit for discovering these spiders? Next time he goes into the safety cage to do whatever it is he does with those spiders, I'll lock the door. He'll have no choice but to listen to me then. What does he mean about me not being right in the head? There's nothing wrong with me. He's the one trying to steal my discovery. Does he think I don't see what he's doing? There's nothing wrong with me. Nothing! He keeps talking to me like I'm insane. I'm not insane. Who said I'm insane? Did I say I was insane? I'll show him insane. It doesn't matter. He'll see what real power is. The chanting we heard just outside the main chamber must mean there's something extremely powerful there. If I can get my hands on that energy and bring it back, who knows what kind of discoveries we can make from it. All right, well, we'll put Marilar's journal back. We'll search this main hall first. And here I'm primarily concerned with the enemies that we already killed. I do hear spider eggs too, so I should be alert to that. There's the other bandit. We got that one. Good. This looks like the way down to the bottom area. Always good to have that locked down. Oh goodness, how are all, how are both of those misses? Okay, so we got the chest here. And then sure enough, we do cut over into the trench we could actually see. doesn't appear to have anything else in it, but that's fine. As for the main room, we do have another egg up here, so let's deal with that first and foremost. And this, I believe, would be the way forward. Let's head back here and check that side area first. I hear more spiders here. 
Just lovely. We got dead reavers. What the heck was that? That appears to be an already dead spider. Fair enough. Let's deal with these eggs. As we can. Got that one. We're slowly but surely whittling them all down. There's another one in here, naturally. Deal with it too. Okay. Think that might be it. There's Marilar's cage door key. Let's see if there's anything else. Bookwise, first of all. Don't expect much anymore. We've read almost every book. Except the actual quest-oriented ones that we'll run into no matter what. Yep, we've read all those, so that's it for that room. So staying on this level, let's check out behind this cage door. More spider webs. Still more spider webs. And barred doors. We got freaky possessed looking bandits. And a couple of spiders. Okay, so let's search them first. And then we'll check the room, so to speak. I don't really think I'm going to find anything other than them. Let's move on. Tucked away back here is a chest. Lovely. Now let's head up here. I have about 10 minutes left. That'll suffice for sort of the opening portion of this dungeon. Let's hit this. Here's Servos Rendus. We can read Servos's journal, so let's do. And take it off the list. She's finally done it. I knew she'd eventually crack. I probably should have left when I had the chance. The untapped power within these spiders has finally gone to Marilar's head. Who would have thought these tiny albino creatures had the ability to harness such magic? Being locked in this cage is frustrating, of course, but it is keeping me even more focused on my work. What did she think I was going to do, anyway? As my sister, she must have known how devoted I am to this work. Although I can't falter for her actions right now. Who knows what kind of fumes these experiments have been giving off, or what effect they have on the human brain. At least I'm alright. Or maybe I'm not, but I think I am. Could these experiments be having the same effect on me that they are on her? Magnificent! It seems as though you can combine any one of the base spiders with a modifier to tweak its behavior. For instance, just imbuing an albino pod with a ruby seems to create a spider that jumps at its victims and proceeds to explode. But by simply adding a salt pile to the mix, it creates the same manner of spider, but instead of jumping and exploding, it emits flames from its body. I'd experiment with more of these behaviors, but it seems the bandits we tested the mind control spiders on are all still locked away. Marilar doesn't want me to let them out. Maybe there are too many in there for her to handle? 
I heard her muttering to herself earlier today. She was saying things like, the spiders are mine, they'll listen to me. What exactly is she planning? I hope she's not attempting to enter the blocked off room in the main chamber. She knows we specifically sealed it after hearing odd chanting coming from that direction. Then again, what she used to know may not matter right now, considering the state she's been in. I hope she'll be all right. Yes, well, we saw how that turned out. We'll put his journal back. So he's got materials here. That's all cool. Imbuing chamber. Empty. And here's a book. Spider Experiment Notes, which we can read and then remove from the book list. I've only tried a few combinations, but things look promising. Here's what I've discovered so far. Ruby plus albino pod, jumping flame spider. Ruby plus damaged pod equals exploding flame spider. Ruby plus salt pile plus damaged pod, nothing. Ruby plus salt pile plus albino pod equals flame cloaked spider. Looking at the results, it seems as though the purity of the gem could enhance the imbuing process in some unforeseen way. Perhaps if I could get my hands on a flawless ruby. I have also theorized that if one were to mix most any of the ingredients in the previous experiments, a new discovery is likely to be made. Upon further inspection of both a diamond and a garnet, it seems they don't contain the necessary power required. I know for a fact that a ruby works, as seen in my previous experiments. Next, I'll see how the reaction works with an amethyst, emerald, or even a sapphire. There must be other types of spiders out there. Who knows what other kinds of imbuing processes have taken place. We'd best keep our eyes open. The source of the interaction will most likely be nearby, whatever new species we find. There's all that. Now we can roll over here, as you may have surmised, that exit up to Solstheim will take us out to that little wooden cabin that we saw before. Oh, let's jump back in. check out this tunnel before we head back to the main room and continue. Well, that's all pretty straightforward. All right. Well, let's go see about that odd chanting, shall we? Ah! Ah! Yes! All of the above. Black Book, Word Wall, and yes, a Dragon Priest. This one is Dukon. With Dukon dead, White Ridge Barrow is cleared. As you can see. There's so little game left now. It's kind of blowing my mind. Let's search the boss chest. Search Dukan's remains for his mask. Increases frost resistance by 50% and frost spell damage by 25%. So we'll take Dukan off of our artifact list. And we will learn the second word of Cyclone. Word of power learned. Unleash Cyclone. So let's unlock it. The word wall translates to Noble Nord, remember these words of the Whore Father. A warrior fights his evil, but a king unleashes on his enemy. Alright, that's two of the three words of Cyclone. We'll take Unleash off the shout list. And finally, 
we'll go grab that last black book. This is the Sallow Regent. Black book, the Sallow Regent added. So I'll take that off the book list as we get teleported to Apocrypha. The book itself reads, Started, Black Book, The Sallow Regent. Learn the Black Book's hidden knowledge. I read the Black Book called The Sallow Regent and found myself in Hermaeus Mora's realm of Apocrypha. I should uncover the knowledge hidden here or read the book again to escape. So, the book itself actually reads... Since we can never read them, but I am taking it off the book list. The Sallow Regent by Hophip the Crafter. Act 1, Scene 1. Enter Philomena with broken scepter. Philomena, woe betide my fate-wrecked heart, which gives no tender shine to he, who gave his favors up to gods, and brought his blood-struck mind to me. And with that, I've been going pretty darn close to two hours, so I think now is a perfect time to end the video. This has been Let's Play Skyrim. We've done a lot of exploring and a bit of questing. Next time, we'll continue on that train, starting with this new realm of Apocrypha, the Sallow Regent. Until then, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy my videos, please consider clicking an ad, liking, sharing, or subscribing, any or all of which would really help me out. Regardless, please know that I really do appreciate the time you spend watching, and hope you have a fantastic day.